You haven't peaked yet, you're just getting started. That's the message my special guest has for women over 40, and she should know. She's launched her business as a podcaster, author, public speaker, blogger, and founder of the media platform, all the six months before turning 50. So today we are talking about encouraging women over 40 to put fear aside and take action. So welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Thank you guys so much for keep coming back and listening to the podcast. I am so thrilled at the way the podcast is being received. So please continue to come back, subscribe and share. So today my special guest is the host of a weekly podcast called Fearlessly Facing 50 and author of The Cannonball, Fearlessly Facing Midlife and Beyond, which during its launch week trended as the number one bestseller seller in new releases on Amazon. So yay. (laughs) And my guest is on a mission to change the narrative around midlife from crisis to opportunity and challenge women to take on this phase of life with confidence, making their splash cannonballing with confidence. My guest is a national speaker, offers workshops on podcasting and finding your confidence behind the mic and is currently navigating book clubs virtually this summer with her new release. So get ready to stand up, lean in, and cannonball with confidence. So welcome Amy Schmidt to the show. So thank you, Nicole. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Well, you got that all out. I mean, that's a lot. Fearlessly facing 50, fearlessly facing mid. It's a lot. So well done. Okay. (laughs) It's all good words, though. I mean, like they're well put together for sure. Um, So tell everybody a little bit how you got into your business, how the podcast came about, the Mm. book. You know, what made you jump in and tackle all these accomplishments? Mm, Great question. Thanks for asking that. And I love that we share the same space. You know, we're encouraging women. That's what it's all about. So at any age, really. But for me, you know, my story was really, um, you know, I I had moved to actually Germany when I was 40, just had turned 40. And with our kids, you know, we spent six years over there in Germany, and I was kind of navigating my 40s. Before that, I had moved 10 times before that with my husband's job. And, you know, raising my kids and like we do, we just pick up the pieces and we just keep moving forward. That's what we do as women. So about five years ago, um, I had lost my parents, both my mom and my dad, within about 18 months of each other. Mm-hmm. I experienced a few health hiccups along the way for me, those things that all of a sudden after 40 you hit as women like, oh, wow, your blood pressure is a little higher. Oh, wh- what is that number on the scale? You know, all of those <laughs> things that we experience. And all of a sudden I'm having these conversations with my, my friends. We're all talking about the same things. You know, we're talking about our parents aging, um, looking at our heroes that now we're taking care of, or, you know, our relationships changing, all of these things that we share as commonalities as women. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to use the experiences that I've had to this point in my life and launch a business. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to start this podcast. I'm going to open the dialogue. I'm going to challenge myself and others to share their stories, be vulnerable, and through that, create this community. And um, so that's that's really how it all started. You know, I started the podcast six months before I turned 50, not knowing a thing about podcasting. (laughs) Um, And I wrote a book. So you know what, it's, it's, it's been really amazing. And, uh, and it's just starting. So, you know, that's that's the fun part. Just the beginning. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So um you worked as a radio intern and worked your mm-hmm. way up through the company. Is that correct? I did. So, you know, that's what I was ready to do at 22, set the world on fire as a news broadcaster. That was it. You know, I was going to be the next whoever, I think it was Joan London. And I actually had her on my podcast a while ago. So that was like a pinch me moment. Um, you know, that's what I wanted to do. I always loved conversations and connections and networking. I love that. So that's what I wanted to do. And that was my background until, you know, I married my college sweetheart and, uh, and that (laughs) that just happened. Yeah. Yeah, really (laughs) darn. Um, and, and it just happened that, you know, we sat down and I remember talking about it at the time because he was on this trajectory of moving every two to three years on his role. Mm -hmm. And we decided as a couple to say, Hey, you know, Amy, I can't, you, you can't just continue in broadcasting when you're uprooting every 24 months. You have to root into your community. So, um, so in 1997, when I had my first child, um, our daughter who now is 23, um, I, I took on the role of traveling spouse. That's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. And a lot of people say, 
wow, you like say traveling spouse, like it just rolls off your, you know, yeah. isn't that, do you really like that term? And I said, you know what I do? Because we decided as a couple to do that, but also I immersed myself in all sorts of different experiences along that, that mm -hmm. have gotten me to where I am today. I wouldn't have been able to do this today if I wouldn't have taken on that role. Right. Yeah. You probably saw a lot of places, a lot of different, a lot of places, Yeah, a lot of places. We're in the sash that says I have it in my book. It's like, new kid in town, you know, walking into the PTA <laughs> meeting and it's like, I'm here, come oh, talk to me, um, which is should, never, you, you should write yeah. a handbook on that. I, for I think so. That, yeah. <laughs> when you pull in the parking lot at the PTA meeting and you're right. thinking, oh, I just uh, want to go to Starbucks instead, but you right. got to just push Run through and, and do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Been there. Been there. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, one of the things that I, you were talking about doing London and the thought popped into my head and it's a side story, but I think you'll appreciate it being in the radio. Um, so I used to live in Annapolis and I was a waitress there. And sure. um, when I was there, the guy who owned the company, he was like, you need to go wait on this table. And I was like, okay, who is it? It was Walter Cronkite. Wow. And all his friends. Yeah. And they had this, it used to be called the aviator room. And so okay. and I was so nervous because it was sure. really tight and he was super nice. And then there was another time I waited on him and his wife out. We, it was when, um, outside eating wasn't really a thing then okay you know yeah, like it was just yeah. starting and um they had dessert and there was a guy sitting not too far away and he was like is that who i think it is mm, <laughs> and I was like amazing it, it was so cool though he was super nice but anyway yeah oh, yeah so it's quiet. funny because they are like regular humans you know i mean yeah. they're people yeah yeah, yeah 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 funny so cool i'll have to check out your episode with uh, joan london that would be cool tell everybody a little bit why turning 50 is a wake-up call for most women mm. I think it is, you know, and, and I just want to preface that by saying I can remember my mom turning 50. I, I can remember that day, which mm. is so funny. We lived in Wisconsin and she was having a big birthday party. I think my dad had planned it. I remember putting a necklace on her. I was probably 13 or 12 at the time and thinking, wow, mom, you're 50. That is like crazy old. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm here. I wish she was still here to see me turn 50 and what I'm doing. But um, I think it is a big wake up call for women because it's a time when we're navigating so many shifting things. You know, roles are changing. Um, maybe you're at the pinnacle of your career at 50 and all of a sudden they say, oh, so sorry. You know, you've done a great job, but mm, you're being replaced or we're downsizing. Or maybe you're, you know, you've raised your kids and now you're becoming empty nesters. Or, and all of a sudden you're sitting across, you know, the table from your husband who you love dearly, but you're like, wow, like it's you and me now. Um, <laughs> wow. We have no other distractions. I'm not running here to practice or, you know, yeah. whatever. So I think the thing for women at 50 is just the whole identity question. Mm. You're maybe, you know, been a mom, a daughter, a sister, um, a wife, and where does Amy go? And I think that's where, what we struggle with as women. I think more than men, but I know there's data to, to support around men have that same feeling. But for women, you know, all of a sudden it's like, wow, I have all these experiences, but where am I needed now? Where can I add value? And, um, and that's the biggest shift I see. Yeah, um, I, I will be 47 in a Mm. A couple months. Um, so I'm creeping up to 50. Creeping and, up to 50, yeah. yeah. Which, but I really feel like, and granted, I'm not at 50, so when I turn 50, I'll have to let you know. But yeah. I feel like 40 was when things really right. shifted for me. And I was Interesting. Like, yeah. yeah. But I don't think, like, I envisioned 50 being more of a, um, a mature shift rather than 40 yeah. was like, whoa, what is... Who am right. I? Why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. No, I think that's true. And I think at 50, you have more time than you did at 42. I just think, you know, yeah. depending on the cadence of your life and your kids' ages, but all of a sudden you have this time. Mm. And like, you know, I, I was talking to a woman recently and we had a chat about, you know, you, you kind of open up the screen door and it's like you actually hear the birds and, you, and, you, and you're noticing the green and all these things that make you feel old. But at the same point, you actually have that time. Yeah. to reflect on that. And um, so, you know, it's your time to engage in lifetime learning and figure out something new. There's so many resources, like for podcasting, for me, I had no idea how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, simply put a, a post in, the, in a local Facebook group in Connecticut. And sure enough, this guy comes over. I could have been his mom. He called me Mrs. Schmidt. I had to <laughs> stop that right away and say, just call me Amy. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. And, um, and then, you know, he, he kind of gave me the pieces to put it together. But I wanted to learn it myself. And I think that um, as women, we have to keep engaging. We have to keep challenging ourselves. And it's easy to not go out of our comfort zone and just stay, 
you know, stay stuck. I think the biggest thing for women at this age is to just, you know, go for it, you know, do something that challenges them in a different way. And I use the example in, in my book about, I share a lot of stories. And one of them is one day when my kids and my husband were all going to go skiing. We, we happened to be in Italy, which was just a, a boondoggle. And we lived in Europe at the time. And this is just something we were able to do. And I knew that I couldn't ski the black diamonds. I knew I'd be holding them up. I knew that I didn't really want to do it because I had a fear around it. Um, so I decided to you know, do something else that day and challenge myself differently. And we have to continue to do that as women, whether it's taking a class or I recently had a 55 year old woman reach out and say, you know what, I'm going back to get my degree. Um, she had a few classes left and it's like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. So I think the whole engaging and, and getting comfortable getting comfortable being uncomfortable is something we need to do at this age. Yeah. And um, putting yourself first for sure. Like, oh boy. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Because treating they, yourself as your guest of honor. I know we just don't oh, do I it. I love that. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think you take on roles, you know, and I think really what happens, at least I know in my case, my role shifted when I got married and I married sure. late, later in life. I was 30. How old was that? I was 30. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so, but like, I feel like at that point it was like, okay, now you're the wife, now right. you're the mom. And you know, once you get past that phase, yeah. um, you know, then who, who are you and the kids? Right. Like, not that you're not their mom, but you know, exactly. you're in this whole new phase, like you're saying, like, you know, you're looking at your husband going, yeah, I know we've wow. been together for a long time, but who yeah. the heck are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do because, you like to do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we used to play a game when we would go out and like have to put a quarter in the middle of the table if we talked about our kids, you know, because that's all oh. we talked about. It was just all consuming. And then all of a sudden they're off doing their own thing. I've grown kids. I still have one in high school, but the others are older. And um, it's like you got to reconnect with that. You got to you got to nurture that relationship with your spouse or partner. You really do because that they're they're there for you. They're they're your biggest cheerleader at this point. Right, right. So um, talk a little bit about like the judgments of oh, other yeah. people. Isn't that so true? Well, I mean, we all do it too. Let's be honest. You know, we're victim of, of that. And we also are, you know, we do it ourselves. Um, yeah. And, and it's just something we need to get over. And I think that, uh, but, but women just do that. I mean, we just tend to profile. We tend to judge uh, there's one story in the book where I'm running a 5k, which I'm not a runner. Nicole, maybe you can get me to do that. Cause you look like you're a big runner. Uh, I, I, I did this, you know, couch to 5k type app, but, uh, but I did it with a group of women, uh, through a local running store and, and, and man, I, I just didn't even want to, I didn't want to, I, I'm not a runner. I was a swimmer. I just don't enjoy running, but my friends were like, come on, let's do this. It's called run like a mother. Let's do it. And mm -hmm. I remember going to the to the running store for the first day. It was like six weeks before the race was taking place. And, and we had to sign up online and my friends were there. But of course, you walk into this room of women. And what do we do immediately as women? I mean, it, and we're not doing it because we're being mean. It's just we just do it. I'm looking at the six foot three, you know, 140 pound, beautiful woman whose strides will be I'll be taking 10 <laughs> steps to her, too. And I'm going, oh, man, here I am again. You know, what am I doing? And so we just really have to. Um, we have to change that lens around. We really do. We have to change that, shift that mindset and just realize that um, we're doing the best we can. And, and my big mm -hmm. thing is, you know, I'm enough just as I am. Mm -hmm. You're enough just as you are. And, right. and just put yourself out there and do it. And don't worry about what everybody says. And that's the whole preface beside, behind Cannonball in the name of the book, um, because I want women to, you know, not get stopped at the third rung of the diving board, but get up to the top mm -hmm. and then run off and it's not going to be pretty it's starting ugly. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. And you're making this huge splash and everybody's watching, right. but it's okay because you have that confidence. Right. And that's the biggest thing. It's, it's underlying confidence. It's that confidence you need to find within yourself to say, I'm doing the best. They're doing their best. And we got to get past the judging. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things that I talk about on my podcast, um, other than the interviews is, mindset, fitness, and nutrition. Yes. And I think we also talk about like your primitive brain versus your mm. um, prefrontal cortex, which I like to call the sophisticated brain. But like, oh, I wow. feel like your primitive brain is yeah. why we are all judging. You know, mm -hmm. I think it comes Good back point. to staying in the tribe, yes. being the one that is procreating and making right. all the humans. Um, and just, you know, because if you weren't accepted in the tribe, you were booted out and you would most likely die. 
Right. So I right. really think that that is something that's really deeply ingrained in us. I'm not saying we have interesting to perspective. Go with yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and I know too, growing up in the ballet world, I was a professional ballet dancer um, before I got married and that is an intense, like mm. you are judged from the moment you walk in that door yes. till right. the time you leave. And it's from how your hair is, who yes. you're looking at, how you're standing, what you're wearing, what do you weigh, all right. these, you know, right. not just technique and everything. So um, I, I just feel like the judgments mm -hmm. on ourselves is where we get tripped up. You know, like Absolutely. if we were comfortable in our own skin, right then we wouldn't need to be all judging. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. And why is it that, you know, there was a study put out recently, women between the ages of 40, 40, 40 and 45 looked at themselves in, their, in the mirror and they immediately were filled with self-doubt because they wanted to see the reflection of a 25 or 30 year old woman. And they see the reflection of where they are now in their story. And uh, I think that's so important. We are our worst critics, for sure. I mean, we are. Um, it, it, it's just something we do. But uh, what I always encourage women to do also is, um, you know, just to sit back and, and revel in their accomplishments and create what I call a highlight reel of what they've done to that point in their life and take that and then propel them forward. Instead of criticizing what you've done, you know, look at yourself as these experiences and opportunities you've had and accomplishments. Right. Uh, yeah. One of the things that... Um always stuck in my mind because I'm starting to see like the crow's feet, you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or the, oh, yeah. the lines. But, um, yes. you know, I look at that, like I've had a lot of happy, happy life, you know, right. and these lines are from that. And I think yes. too, when you look in the mirror, you, you can go both ways. Like you can, if you're, if you're happy with what you're looking at, as far as like something that you can kind of control. So take right. for instance, like your weight, if you're not happy with your weight, right you know, give yourself a pity party for like five seconds and yeah. then be like, put your big girl panties yes. on and figure out how yes. you need to do it. Um, right. Now, you know, facially and stuff, but I, I think because media and everybody's so focused on the younger generation, um, I was just talking to another guest about this, um, but like now they're starting to have models who are in their 40s and 50s, yes. um, even yes. 70s and 80s. May Musk, 68, she got her cover girl. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Isn't that so crazy? Like, yeah, but I mean, just that alone, like, right. even though there's only like a, a couple examples, just grab onto them, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So true. Yeah. True. So I know you touched on a little bit about your a book. Um, anything else yeah. you want to include in that and tell people where they can get it? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, so it's called Cannibal. I'll put the cover up here because um, that is indeed me. And um, it's a pretty bold move. And, you know, for all of your women that are listening and watching right now, I mean, it. it I had my brother who I'm one of five, youngest of five. And he said to me, he's 10 years older. He said, Amy, are you really, that's pretty bold. You know, you're like, you're in your swimsuit. Do you really want to do that? And I said, yeah, that's what it's about. So the book is called Cannonball Fearlessly Facing Midlife and Beyond. It's available on Amazon. It's also in bookstores, but I encourage you to, to pick up a copy. Um, it's, it's my story. Uh, also stories of other women that have encouraged me along my journey and shared their, their insights and knowledge. And then the part I love is at the end of each chapter, it talks about reflections that you can apply to your life, where you are, whether, you know, what story you're navigating, circumstance, everybody's is different. It's not five things that you have to do to get this far or something right. like that. It's literally just looking at your life where you are and saying, wow, these are maybe some things I can think about. And um, so I'm very vulnerable. It's a lot of stories of myself, my journey um, through losing my parents, through all sorts of different things that we all have commonalities about as women. Um, I call it cannonball because I want everybody to cannonball with confidence, no matter where they are. And that means, and, and not just one cannonball moment, all of their cannonball moments, you know? And um, so that's what it's really about. I've been really excited about it. I've gotten good feedback. Women have really enjoyed reading it. Um, for me, it's like the what to expect at midlife that we all had, what to expect when you're expecting <laughs> and yeah, yeah, toddler years, teen years. Well, this is, should be on everybody's bookshelf to say, Hey, this is where you are. And, um, but it's not just about turning 50. It's about any age really for women. Cause I think everybody has, um, yeah. times when they're filled with self doubt or they're questioning things or they need to just step, step back and say, I need to create my own, I am greatness statements and, and there's some tools in here to do it. So so it's great. So I encourage you to check it out. It's on Amazon, Cannonball Fearlessly Facing Midlife and Beyond. Yeah. And if anybody misses those links or anything, I will have them all in the show notes. Awesome. You go to Thank shapeitupfitness.com and uh, just look for this episode and they'll all be there. Um, cool. So it takes a lot of vulnerability to write a book. 
Mm -hmm. um, I just put out my, I jokingly, it came out on Mother's Day and I said I birthed my cookbook. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a yeah. cookbook is different than sharing depth and in right. detail stories about yourself. So I applaud yeah. you just Thank in you. the fact that like, Yes, you can pull that book off of Amazon, but there are right. copies of it floating around. <laughs> yes, everywhere. You yeah, know what like I mean? Everybody just... knows Amy Schmidt now, you know? Yeah. It's like, wow, yeah. you really did that? You know, so, yeah. So there was, there definitely is um, a part of that. It's funny because um, I don't want to give away the book, but one story I share is when, when my dad um, passed away, I had to fly from Germany actually by myself because, you know, our kids and my husband were in Germany. My, I got the call from one of my siblings and I had to get to Milwaukee. Well, you got to fly from Germany to Chicago. Nephews picked me up, got me to Milwaukee. And um, I, I really had a, a difficult time. I mean, it was a very challenging time. And uh, there was one point where I just, um, I hope that my dad knew I was there. I always, mm -hmm. I, I'm living with that. You know, I wasn't quite able to make it back in the time that I wanted to. And my brother uh, took me outside in the hallway and he just, you know, held my hand and he just said, you know what, Amy, he's so proud of you. He knows you're here and write that damn book. And, um, and, and I, I, and he did, he said that to me, he said, write that book, Amy, because you've always wanted to do it. Dad's known you've wanted to do it. So, um, so I finally did it. And yeah, writing a book, man, it's a, it's a process as, as you know, with, with your book. I mean, it is a process and it's, it's the editing and it's, you know, getting it back and looking at all the red. It's like mm -hmm. taking you back to college mm -hmm. essays where you're mm -hmm. looking at it and it's like, well, Amy, what about this? And what about this? And let's rewrite chapter three <laughs> and let's revise chapter eight. And what do you, so it was a process, but I'm already on book two. So I'm. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I yeah. really have issues with um, drafts. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> like, uh. I just want to do like a first draft and then maybe tweak the second draft and yeah, then be no. done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Like 19 rounds of edits or whatever it was. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. But, but, but I learned along the way, which was good. And yeah. the reason I really chose the publisher I went with was because they allowed me to put it in my own voice. Nice. And so many nice. times you're skewed and, and, you know, they want it to be a, di a different right. way. And so I, I, I kept it really my story. So it's out there. That's awesome. That is so yeah, awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So everybody can get that at amazon.com and let's go into the speed round. Oh boy. Oof. Okay. So don't be nervous. Yeah, really. <laughs> I, I might be sweating a little during this, man. <laughs> All right. Do you like coffee or tea? Mmm, coffee. Well, and tea, but if I had to pick one over the other, I have to start my day with coffee. Any particular flavor? Vanilla, a vanilla awesome. latte. I love it. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've all had some sort of unique job in the past. Um, I've mentioned it on the podcast that like I used to sit for people, mm -hmm. uh, portrait painting. Um, I had to dress up as a stupid clown and a cowgirl at a pizza joint I worked at. Did you? Oh man. It did. It was in wow. college. It was horrible. <laughs> horrible. Anyway, yeah. But anyway. have you had any jobs like that? Jeez, I <laughs> haven't had any name crazy or jobs. I never had to dress up in costume or like spin a sign or anything. No, mm -hmm. I was always, um, I was always a swim instructor. Like I was a mm -hmm. lifeguard, and I was known as the manager that always, you know, if the pool closed a little early or something, we always had like a little party. I probably shouldn't even put that afterwards. But all the guards, we would. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's about it. I mean, I didn't really have any really fun jobs. Boy, you're going to have to share about that. That's an interesting one, Nicole. <laughs> I have, you know, you're saying you're a lifeguard. I'll share a little, I'll make it real short. But so I used to work as a physical therapist assistant and they had a pool. Mm. So we had pool therapy. Um, I, I'm going to put this out there. I'm deathly afraid of deep water because I almost drowned really? as a child. Mm -hmm. Now I can swim, like I can save myself. I can float, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Don't ask me to save anybody else, though. Right, right. <laughs> like, yeah. So I would be in the pool with the noodle, helping you know the therapy patients and stuff like that. So they basically were like, "You have to get CPR or lifeguard certified." Certified, sure. So they brought somebody in. We all had to do this. I am telling you, I had a coronary that day. Oh, I yeah. was like the total nerd with the plugs in the nose, the goggles, the goggles, the, like, yeah. Praying. Yeah. I wish somebody had taken my um, blood pressure at that point because I, I'm no. Would have been off the charts. Cardiac yeah. arrest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just from the oh, fear yeah. because you have to dive in the, and you know, you have to dive in the pool and pick up a brick at the bottom of yes. the pool. Yes. It, it's not easy. I never it's liked lifeguard easy. training. I know. It's challenging. So, <laughs> well, here's the catcher. At the end, me and this other girl, she was freaking out as much as I was. Thank goodness there was a friend there who was like coaching me. He was like, you can do it. You can do it. But yeah. at the end, 
the guy who ran the place that I work, the, they basically said that <laughs> we passed, but they're going to hold the lifeguard um, certification because we're not allowed to work anywhere else. And I was like, oh, boy, a little sketchy. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't know if I like that. Yeah. So I'm technically lifeguard certified. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Go with it. <laughs> yeah. So one day if I'm ever out your way out, you'll have to teach me. Yes. Some, uh, yes. Nice swimming lessons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a great thing. Oh, yeah. No, I don't enjoy like water sports or. Yeah, that's funny. Like a that. lot of people are that way. Yeah. 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 Just... That maybe that'll be my fearless your fearless moment. Ask, yeah. Your cannonball moment. There you go. Yeah, Get I more confidence all... in the water. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. Let's get back to those beat around. Um, all right. So what is your favorite movie? Ooh, boy. Oh, boy. I love Sleepless in Seattle. Mm, good movie. Very I just good. love it. Yeah, yeah. It's just a feel a good movie. pick me up. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a favorite toy growing up? Mm, yes. The lemon twist. Does anybody remember that? Maybe it was just a Wisconsin thing, but it was my favorite. You put it on your ankle, had a lemon on the end, and you jumped around it. Okay. Stupid. Stupid. But called. Yeah. I don't. I remember it, but I don't think it was called the lemon. At least in my mind. I used to take it to friends' houses. I mean, maybe I was the only one that had a lemon (laughs) twist. I don't know, but it was one of my faves for sure. (laughs) That's awesome. You should try and find that and do that. I think maybe it could come back. It's vintage now. Maybe th- hey, there you go. All See? the stuff is coming back. They've it run is. out of ideas. It is. Remember the light bright? Oh man. Oh that yeah. Was another one. Yeah. Poking the lights in there. Oh yeah. Um, operation. I loved oh, it. Sure. And hated it at the same time. Like when it would get zapped, it would like scare me, oh, me to too. no end. Yeah, and it was taking out the um, piece of uh, ham, the ham bone. Yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> the one that always lit it up for me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. So last question. What is your favorite inspirational quote? Mm. It's actually one that I have that is just, you haven't peaked yet. You're just getting started. Mm, good one. For sure. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I think you can carry that through till you're 90. I think so. <laughs> I think I so too. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's so true. We just haven't peaked yet, you know? Yeah. No, I 100% agree. So one takeaway that you want to give our listeners before we wrap up. You know what? I think the biggest thing for me right now, especially at this time when we're all navigating this pandemic of uncertainty and we're anxious and we're trying to be three steps ahead, but we can't be because we don't even know what tomorrow's going to bring. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's days where you just want to pull the covers over your head and say, all right, is this just a dream? Like, get me out of here that I can't take it. My advice would be six words, get up, get dressed, get going. Mm. Those are my things. Yeah. And I feel like, hey, have your pity party, like you said before, for your couple minutes, pull the covers over and say, okay, yeah, this sucks right now. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. But then get up, get dressed, get going and and put yourself out there. And um, the biggest thing is have your cannonball moments. Don't don't let fear. Don't let fear get in the way and stop you. You know what? You can always recalibrate. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. The timing mm-hmm. doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but don't procrastinate. Just keep going. And I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. I love the saying that success is built on a pile of failures. Mm, I like that. Yeah. I don't know if that's the exact quote, but it's close enough. (laughs) But yeah. And I can, I'm such a visual person. Like I I love that. Mm. Actually, that's really, that's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Amy, thank you so much for being on today. I love talking to you. Yeah. And so everybody go grab her book and check it out. Um, Like I said, everything will be on shapeitupfitness.com, the show notes. And we'll have all your Instagram and all that, whatever you're on. And you're rocking <laughs> it, girl. You're doing, you're doing awesome. You're doing oh, thank awesome. You. Yeah, thank you. yeah. I, I mean, I love following my, and seeing all the stuff. It's great stuff. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my um, philosophy has been just like do it. Really, just like absolutely just go for it. If it scares me, then I know I'm doing it right. Totally. Yeah. So now I just totally. gotta learn how to swim. <laughs> there you well, go. Learn how to swim right. well. <laughs> yes, yes, totally. And please encourage your um, listeners, you know, your followers to um, use the hashtag cannonball with confidence on anything that they do. Um, I love that when uh, when people do something and they're like, hey, that's my cannonball with confidence moment. So yeah, yeah that's that's probably a nice pick me up when you're looking through like when you type in the hashtag and you yes. see all the feeds. It's amazing. Come up. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. cool stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll leave Thanks, that hashtag Nicole. in the uh, show notes as well so everybody can cool. use that tag. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Sounds thank good. Thank you so much for yes. joining us. Thank you for having me. 
and everybody else have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you next week. Yeah, stay well.